You're watching DCTV Denton Community Television. Praise God, praise God, what another lovely day, and I am so thankful and very elated that I am able once again to come into your place, wherever it may be in the world, praise God. I am just so excited, I tell you, and you know, I said in the world, and like, I, I, I don't know why I said that, but I don't know how far, you know, I reach, but anyway, I'm just so ancient that I know that one day I will touch the world for the Lord Jesus Christ with his word, the message of the cross. And that's the reason I'm just so excited. And I mean, I'm very excited. And I want to say this day that I have a powerful message that the Lord has laid upon my heart to give to his peoples. You know, I want to say it in the right way. I, I you know, it's, I, I struggled with it because I had to pray and I had to meditate and I had to seek the face of God off and on and as I walk and as I run because I wanted to be sure because one thing about Pastor Jerry, I don't like just being before people just to have something to say. I want to say that which God know that going to help his peoples, going to encourage his peoples, going to give his peoples hope and inspiration, you know, to study his word and to draw closer to him and have such a desire for him. That's the reason why I study and I prayerfully pray for God to give me a word. Because, you know, if I was like a lot of people, oh, I would just get up here and just throw something at you and have somebody else's book before me and just tell you something. But I, I can't, I, I'm not that way. I, I have to do what God would have me to do. And I'm so thankful. Let me tell you something that happened in church yesterday, which was Sunday. You know, I had prayed about a message, and I do it all the time, and the Lord had really given me something because, you know, I know sometimes I, I stand behind the sacred desk, and, you know, and I open the Bible and began to speak when he gave me a word. And yesterday, I was just so, I said, Lord, you hadn't given me a word. And by the time I got to church, <clears throat> And I stood behind the sacred desk to preach to the wonderful people that was there. Praise God. And God laid it up on me. Boy, I tell you the truth, I must have, whew, I shot it. I said, you know, and after it was all done. And, you know, I, and I know, see, you know, when you pray and ask God to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you, God will do that. But let me tell you something. See, if you don't have a prayer life with our Heavenly Father, if you don't have a prayer life, you don't have a relationship with him. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what who tell. I don't, it doesn't matter. I want you to hear what God laid upon my heart to tell you. If you don't have a prayer life with our heavenly father in the name of Jesus, you don't have a relate. I don't care how you can, you can sleep in the church. It don't make no difference. You can get up, but you can be, live on top of it. You can live under one of the, the people, whatever. If you don't have a prayer life, you, you can't tell me that you, feel you have a relationship with God. No, you don't. Cause you got that. That's the only other means of talking to him. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, when the Lord gave me the word yesterday as I stood behind the sacred desk in the church yesterday, I, I, was, I mean, when I got home, I had to go to God and say, Lord, I, I, I know that was you because I didn't know what to say. And I knew it was God. And he had me to go to Isaiah, the 61st uh, chapter, and then he brought me all the way to Acts, the 16th chapter. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, it is, you know, that's the reason I live the life that I live, because of what I'm going to bring to you today. Hallelujah. But I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the message. Praise God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for another opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, what you is doing, and what you're going to do. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that as I break the bread of life this day, that those that are listening, Father God, those that would take time and get the Bible, Father God, so they can follow along and learn about the message of the cross. What 
victory we have because of what Jesus Christ done on Calvary Cross. I pray that each and every one, Father God, will open their heart, oh, hallelujah, to hear the blessed word of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you so much, and I pray for those, Father God, that may be, Father, suffering in their body, maybe have a confused mind, maybe, Father, looking for a job, maybe looking, Father God, somewhere, Father God, for an answer, but I ask in the name of Jesus that they, Father, somehow will turn the, tell, turn the channel on the television and, Father, find Pastor Jerry Gilliard and, Father, let them listen because this is a word straight from the throne of God. Father, I thank you so much in the precious name of Jesus. You've been good to us. Oh, many don't realize it, many don't recognize it. But, Father, I know you've been good and you're the good God and you always, Father, look after your children. I thank you so much this day in Jesus' mighty and holy and righteous name. Amen and thank God. Let me... Um, Continue to, I want to continue to let you know to write, to call, and, and I thank you for what, you, I mean, I tell you, it's, I mean, the phone is just, oof. I tell you, I thank you all for calling and, and saying what you're saying about this, this broadcast because I'm only up here because of Jesus Christ. I'm only up here because I'm led of the Holy Spirit. So you keep calling, you keep writing, and I thank you so much in Jesus' name. Praise God. Now, if you have your Bible, I want to do what the Lord have laid upon my heart to do, and I can't do nothing otherwise. Oh, I, I, you know, I would love to, but I can't do that because I want you to know the truth truth about the Word of God. And if you don't know the truth, and I'm going to uh, uh, read some scriptures out of the Bible to you to let you know what I'm talking about. But the Lord laid upon my heart. He said, I want you to go to the book of Galatians. He said that the book of Galatians has six chapters, but the Lord laid upon me the fifth chapter. You know, the, and, and the number five is uh, in the Bible symbolized grace. Now, I don't know why I can't tell you why he wanted me to bring to you the entirety of the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. Now, I'm going to take it verse by verse. You have to understand that that's month after month. I'm going to have to take it verse by verse because, you know, when I get to talking, that's it. And I'm going to try my best, led by the Holy Spirit, and I know the Holy Spirit will help me to uh, just, you know, try to finish just one verse, you know, as I come on, broad, on, on television to, let you, to help you. I want to help you to understand what God's word means so to you and why you ought to be living a godly and Christian life. You may not understand that. And I know many of you have heard this and been bombarded with so many other things, and I know you may not, you may not grab it all at once, but I pray the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit will convict you and you will grab hold of this word of God because the Lord had had me to. He had me to go to the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians and he want me to teach to you every one of God's children need to understand. Now, I know many of you may not ever heard the message of the cross, which is nothing but the word of God. Hallelujah. According to 1 Corinthians, you can go there and read the first chapter, <coughs> Self, excuse me, 17 and 18. That's all, and, and, I mean, it's all over the Bible, but I'm just giving you those particular scriptures. And you will understand. See, the Bible is about Jesus Christ coming into the world to redeem man back to God. How did he do that? He did it dying on the cross. He didn't die in a car. He didn't, he didn't get drowned it. He died on the cross. So the message of the cross, hallelujah, that which he gave to the apostle Paul, hallelujah. So I want you to understand, and I'm going to help you today. And listen, until we finish, it, it's uh, 26 verses in uh, chapter 5 of Galatians. And we're going, to cap, we're going to take all 26, not today, only one verse. I have, I have the time to do just one verse, and I want you to understand something, that this is going to help you to walk in victory. God prescribed order of victory due to the fact of what Jesus Christ done on Calvary Cross. Now, the theme of this chapter, and I want you to hear it good, the theme of this chapter, Galatians, the fifth chapter, the theme is outside, I want you to hear me good, Outside of the cross, there is nothing but bondage. And I'll tell you what, I've been there. 
because nobody told the truth about the word of God. And I was in bondage until God's revelation came to me as it came to Paul about the message of the cross. Where everything you need, Jesus already paid for it at the cross. You're going to find out in this chapter that I'm going to teach and preach to you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to take it verse by verse. You got to understand that. I can't deviate from that because God has already told me how to do it. Praise God. Now, if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. And I'll tell you, I am fired up because God has given me a word. Hallelujah. I don't know anything, y'all. You got to understand that. But I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit speak through me. Now, if you have Galatians, the fifth chapter, and that first verse, it reads, stand fast, therefore. Now, when you see that word, therefore, and you don't take or uh, put nothing in in God's word, but to give you an understanding, when Paul says, stand therefore, stand fast, therefore, you could say, stand fast, then in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Remember the towel? Outside of the cross, there is nothing but bondage, and I'm going to tell you why as I take you through Galatians, the fifth chapter. Now listen, the great book and the fifth chapter of Galatians proclaims what happens to the believer. I'm not talking about sinners now. I'm talking about believers, people that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord. They, and, and what they do, who they try to function outside of the cross. Now, when you try to function outside of the cross, now what I mean by that, you are on the law. You're on the man's direction. You're on the, your own ability. You're going by your own will. You're going about what man say, do, 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 do. This is what I mean about outside of the cross, because you got to understand, when your faith is evidently in the cross of Christ, what Jesus has done there, listen to me good, Everything been done. It's not that you do, do, do. All you have to do is put your faith in what he's done. And he's done. He wants salvation. Listen to me. He wants justification, sanctification. And when Jesus come, we will have glorification. So see, everything been done for you. So if you live it outside of what Jesus have done for you, and let me tell you, most of the modern church today are living, they, well, they don't even know nothing about the, uh, the word of God. I mean, they, 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 they say a lot of stuff, and, you know, they say a lot, but they don't know. I mean, nobody knows what they're talking about. not helping anybody, and I said so. I sure did, and, and because I know what I'm talking about. Because, see, the one that are really standing for what is right, and that is the word of God, and, and standing and preaching God's word, not nobody else's word. We are the ones that get in the call, pray for me, pray for my husband, pray for my child. I got two or three in prison. Da -da 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 -da. You see what I'm saying? Because they believe in what we're teaching. How do you, and let me tell you something. The result is being, it, it, it being seen. You can believe that. Hallelujah. Because, listen, when you don't have the truth, I tell you, well, let's go to the book of John right quick. The eighth chapter and that 32 verse, and listen to what it said, and this is what Jesus said. And he said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What is the truth? It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. What he done there for us? His word. That's the truth. Now, if you don't know the truth, listen to what it said, and you shall know the truth. How are you going to know the truth if you don't study and hear the preaching and the teaching of the solid gospel, which is the message of the cross? you got to understand that. So he said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth, the word of God, will make you free. That means that it will bring you out of the law. 
It'll bring you from under the Mosaic law and all of these other laws like the Pharisees and the Strive and the Sadducees. They tried to make, they made almost 600 laws put onto the Mosaic law. They made up their own law. And you know what they call them laws? They call them the fence law. That means that they surrounded everything else that had already been up as the Mosaic law was. And you can go back to the book of Exodus and Leviticus and see all about them laws. And maybe those laws were something. I'm telling you, and they even coming over in the New Testament, they wanted to hold on to them law. And they was even telling, that's the reason why when Paul established the church, let me go back. When Paul established the church in Galatia, he told those people the truth about the word of God. He taught the message of the cross. He taught the people that your faith evidently must be in Christ and him crucified. Paul taught those people, but now you got to understand something. Paul was on missionary journey. So when he established that church in Galatia, he had to move on to other endeavors. You got to understand that. He had to move on. So as he moved on and left the people, now the people were strong in the, in the word of God. I mean, they was built up in the word of God. But guess what? False teachers, like we have today, and I said it, and I'm going to say it again. False teachers, false apostles, all this other stuff, teaching all this other mess, came in, and guess what? They made it sound so good. Oh, my goodness. I mean, now, Paul, listen, these people had the truth, but these false people, lit, false prophets, false teachers, and everything, if trust, all these people came in, and turned those peoples away and tried to turn some of Some of them held on. And you know what they told them? Paul was gone now. And you know what they told those people? You will not and you cannot be saved unless you be circumcised. That, and, and listen, let me tell you, it's got on today. Believe me. They say you got to do the feast days and believe in, this, in, 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 in their Sabbath, which they talk about on Saturday. That, that, the devil is a lie. And I said so, and I'm going to say it again. The devil is a lie. I mean, they wanted these people to get all back in the law, in their law, what they say was right. And all this stuff, that's the reason why you know and everybody that listen at this broadcast and know Pastor Jerry Gilliard, I always tell you to study the Bible for yourself. Oh, I was down that road, too. I was, I was under the law, too, until I studied, I studied the Bible for myself. And I found out these people was carrying me down the road, road and if I'd have died, I'd have went to hell. Good God Almighty. But I woke up, and I'm warning you again, study the Bible for yourself. Hallelujah. Because ain't nobody, listen, listen, it takes somebody that really loves the Lord. It takes somebody, listen to me, Gua, that really, really have dedicated their life to God and really believe in what this Bible teaches and really believe in Jesus Christ and him crucified, died, resurrected, and now at the right hand of the Father, ever interceded on our behalf. It takes somebody, listen, it takes time to study this Bible. I'm not talking about just say, I'm going to read a chapter. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to go preach. Now, no, I'm not talking about that. Baby, you've got to linger. Baby, you're going to have a burden in your spirit. You're going to share some tears. Oh, yes, you are. You're going to have to be alone. You're going to be isolated. Hallelujah. you got to study until God bring it to you. Oh, good God Almighty. He gives a revelation. Hallelujah. To those that really seeks after him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let, and let me take you to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. See, I love the word of God because the answer, the, this Bible holds every answer you have. Oh, yes, it does. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody told me nothing. I don't too much believe in people's ever they're saying no way because they don't know what they're talking about in the first place. Hallelujah. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, I'm one of these here that have a backbone, and I'll stand up and speak the truth. I mean that. I'll speak the truth because I know, see, I don't have to have this Bible to, to, to back me up, but I sure can stand on it. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the first Corinthians, in that seventh chapter, in that 22nd verse, let me read it to you. It says, for he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord freeman. That means you are free. Likewise, also, he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. So this is the reason why I'm bringing this message to you. Outside of the cross, there is nothing but bondage. And you don't want to be outside of that. You want to be, listen, in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Paul tells us something here. He said within Christ, what Christ has made us free. If you are in Christ, you are free to live a holy, righteous, and godly life. 
But when you outside of that, you can't do it because man got you under so much bondage that you're doing this. I, I got to go, di- go do this, and, and I can't do this. Pat say, I can't do this. Pat say, I got to do this. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. You better get, you, listen, you better get in Jesus Christ because everything, now I'm not, when I, let, me, let, me, let me slow it down. When I say you are free, in Christ because of what he done. I'm not talking about you are free to do anything. I'm not free to you to talk back and do this and do that and all that. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying, you are free in Christ to live for him. You are free in Christ to live a holy life. You are free in Christ to do the right thing. You are free in Christ to treat others right. You are free in Christ to love one another. This is what I'm talking about. You are free in Christ to walk in the things of God. I'm not talking about walking in the law. Listen, the law is out. You go to the book of Colossians, the second chapter, in that 14 and 15 verse, and read and study it for yourself. Read it first and study it for yourself and see all of that been done away with. Your life is not in Christ. In Christ, listen, he died and he was buried and he was resurrected. When you accepted him, you came into him. Listen, you came into Christ. Hallelujah. That means everything, every sin that you've done. Listen, when Christ was put in the grave, all of that was put in the grave. When he got up, you, listen, when he got up, he resurrected. And so you got up with your new life in Christ. So if you are not walking in Christ, Christ, you are living outside and you are in bondage to the law and you don't want to do that. And I'm going to tell you something else. Listen to me good. Man will keep you on the bondage if you don't study the word of God for yourself. And I know what I'm talking about. I was on the bondage for many years. Hallelujah. But I came out because I told God myself. I went to him and I said, Father, it got to be more to you than what these people's talking about. It got to be more to you. Oh, and I tell you, I was led to study God's word for myself because I'm not going to hell. Oh, no, 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 no. But you see so many now talking about we having, let me see, I, I, I start, I don't know, I don't want to go back there. It's in the book of Leviticus. We, they talk about they was having the tabernacle. They doing the, the all these, uh, it's seven of the feast days that they talk about in the Old Testament. That was in the Old Testament. They still doing that today. All of them with the, with the flag and all that. The devil is a lie. You, you, listen, all of that was done away when Christ died. See, you don't know that though because nobody never told you but see if you study the word of God now listen to me that's the reason why Paul in 1st Timothy 315 when he told Paul listen he told I mean Paul told Timothy to study the word study to show thyself approval and I'm telling you I'm telling because listen, my heart goes out to the to, to you. I'm telling you because I know where you're at. You're in bondage. Hallelujah. And you don't understand the word of God. But as Paul said, stand fast therefore in the liberty. Jesus have died and set you free from law. He nailed it to the cross. I'll tell you what, I don't maybe maybe half of you don't believe what I'm saying. Let me let, let, just let me read it to you. Hallelujah. Listen what it says. And listen to me in, in Colossians, the second chapter, in that 14 verse. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against her. What was against her? The law was against her. It couldn't help us. It couldn't save us. Hallelujah. Which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And you wonder why she always talking about the message of the cross. What do you think the Bible is about? Jesus didn't die in no car. What do you think it's about? He didn't die up on a mule. He died up on the cross. Good God Almighty. And listen what verse 15 says. And have his far principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over it. How did he triumph over all the Lord out there? He died, shed his precious blood, got up out of the grave. Hallelujah. Triumphal. Hallelujah. That's how he did it. Whew. Well, and, and, and let me read the next verse. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. You know, so many people talking about, honey, you know, uh, it, uh, Sabbath uh, is on a Sabbath. No, Sabbath is not on a Sabbath. Sabbath is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is our rest. You don't believe me? Turn to the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, in the 28th verse, and read that. Hallelujah. He is our rest. 
how in the world can I bring 900 lambs up here and kill them for everybody to see? And more people in the world, you ain't got that many lambs in the world. Jesus already paid the price. His shed precious blood was shed for you. So now you are, you have the liberty. You, is at, you don't have to be bound to what people's always telling you to do. They don't tell me to do nothing. I wish somebody would try to tell me to do something. No, no, no. You better show enough know God's word before you open your mouth to me. You better know it, and I mean not. You better know it. That's the reason why I don't go in all these, what they call churches today, all this mess going up here. Somebody want to show their hat and want to show what they're wearing and all that mess and twisting and all this mess. And ain't, ain't nothing in there but social gathering. And I said so. Nothing but social gathering. And I know what I'm talking about. When God say speak it, I'm going to speak it on the, I'm gonna speak it on the mountain. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good God am I. Listen, so let, let, let me say this. I want you to know if you have accepted Jesus Christ, you are free from law. You are free from law. Listen to me. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to have the time to give this example, but listen. You know, it's just like we have a law now, in, in, you know, uh, if you run a red light, you get a ticket. That's the law. So I broke the law. You see what I'm saying? I got to abide by that law. That's the law of the land. Well, if you don't believe God have a law, let me take you to the book of Romans. Go to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter with me. Praise God. I tell you, that's what I'm talking about. You need to study the Bible for yourself. Listen what Romans, the eighth chapter, and the second verse says. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. See, the law, listen what it says. For the law, the law, the law, and there, listen, it, it's a law. It's a law. Listen, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. See, you don't have to let sin now, according to Romans 6, 14, you don't have to let sin dominate you now. No, you don't have to do that. What I'm trying to tell you is that sin no longer needs to dominate your life. And that's where most of the moral church is. They're still on the sin, dominated by because they are trying to hold on to law. They're trying to hold on to law. Law cannot help you. It couldn't help them back, back then. Why do you think Jesus Christ came? Oh, I wish I'm I, I hope you're getting this. Why you can't think he can't? That's the reason why he even said in, in Galatians, he told the people, don't be entangled. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. These Galatians, they was all bound down with the law because that's what the people had told them. But when Paul came, he cleared it up. After Paul left, listen, they came right back in. And taught it so pretty. It was so beautiful, like a robe opened up. Like a rose opening up. And they accepted it. Some of them did. And letting them know that they had to be circumcised, to be saved also. And that's not true. See, circumcision at that time was the cutting of the flesh of little boys and men. And that brought them into the covenant under the old covenant. But see, that's no need for that because Christ died to take care of all of that. He took the, he took the pain for us. <laughs> He took the pain for us. So you are at liberty in Christ to live a godly and righteous life. I want you to do that, and I want you to hear me today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can call upon him now, and I know he will hear and answer your prayer. Tell him you're sorry for what you have done. Tell him you want to come out of, you want to come out of all that bondage, and he will help you. He'll do that. And accept him as his, your Savior and your Lord. And the Bible says you will be saved. I'll see you next time.